Everybody's real content, are they? Think they're out there rallying around doing their thing? Not knowing that they're just getting themselves down the road. Nothing really gets accomplished. I've been trying to tell you folks, you got to get it done right, not just doing stuff. See, everything that goes on that doesn't stop what's happening, those people that are doing what's wrong continue to do it wrong and get you into a position that's not going to be something that your future is going to be worth living. It's going to be the future they want, not you. Uh, I don't I don't see so many people saying again, well, it's been on and on actually, but it just seems to be more in my face. People say, I believe, I know, this is what the way it should be, it ought to be this way, and that's the way it's going to be. And they forget the fact that well, they're look, the problem isn't that, that they're looking at a problem the reason why, even why they're there is because it's not that way. And they don't, haven't even taken a step back to look at, well, how do we get so, so rem, amid, uh, missing the mark of where, where it should have been, where it should have been, or what we thought, what, what it was dictated to us to be. Remember, we were gave this thing, whatever this thing was. And then it was put on us, no one understood this, this problem. It was put on us to keep it. That was, to me, in my mind now, that I've, I've been researching this for decades, it was a threat. All this has been a big threat. And we've pretty much failed at every turn. So before we go too much farther, I forget, as I normally do, uh, BTWRLM267 is this broadcast episode. For those of you eventually in the future who ever want to get to see the content that I'll be working from here, uh, the uh, kind of help you start I just give you the titles of the news. It gives me a topic to speak about because I really don't have a focus. Last month, excuse me, last week I focused on some questions. Appreciated the questions, but this week I got no follow through, follow up. I say, I guess. So I'm not sure what the validity of my discussion was there. Don't know if it helped anybody. Don't know if it, uh, t- whatever. I don't have a clue. And there's no response. Uh, this is the chasm of so-called social media. It's really not so social. And so, I mean, I can only hope that I'm uh, helping people and that it, it works. I, I get just enough feedback to to let me know that those people that do have problems, that do set their, their mind to fix something, I bring a little bit of help. I certainly can't answer their problem, but I can certainly give them a focus. It happens uh, periodically, I mean, all the time. Again, at the, at the, the meeting, the, our Jefferson Mining District uh, mining meeting, there was a problem and we kind of worked it out real quick. It, it doesn't take that long, folks, just uh, how to give yourself a the best steps forward to solve problems. But seemingly, we don't have that in us anymore. We're really not, we're not really uh, prepared. And I think that's part of what's part of the plan, part of the diffusion of energy and, and, and everything else that goes on that doesn't get us into resolving the what we see as problems and continues them to keep coming in our face. So I, I, I get, at some point, I start wondering what the value of what I do is uh, when I speak to something and no no reflection, no 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 response in the general. I get no reflection, no response from people even promoting the broadcast. A few of you do, and I thank you very very much. It just gets the word out. Apparently, this is the I'm sitting on the worst marketing plan ever ever con- conceived. It, it used to be I could do mass marketing and understand I get a three percent return. I'm going to get a point zero zero three percent return on what I do with this. And the difference here is I'm not speaking to a consumer, uh, which I've got to convince. I've got, I'm speaking to someone that's got to stop being a consumer. I've got to speak to someone who wants to take responsibility and step up into doing something. And then do it without, I keep telling you, it's you're naked before this system, this thing. It isn't. It is what it ought to have. It's not what it ought to have been. But you can't start with what you think is ought and think that's reality. The reality is what you're responding to. And so in that regard, and even though I don't do too much of it, and I haven't been inspired to even look even deeper, I just more things to go after and look at if I needed to. And I just got so much. This week I just shut down most everything I was doing except to try and focus on things that are needing to be done and uh, not trying to be the uh, gadfly on social media, trying to explain to people little things I can see here and there that might give them an insight. Uh, Stop fighting amongst ourselves is mainly the main thing I can see. But I just shut all the I shut out most all that down. I'm still being buried by stuff that needs to be done. Uh, this is just how much work work there is if you if you want to pick it up and can do if you have the ability to. But I was talking about First Amendment audits last week, and I was given an insight, asked to critique a web a, a contributor on YouTube. 
Well, I ran across another one uh, that I would want to people, if you're going to do this, uh, this gentleman spoke to me very clearly. He tells exactly what I've been telling you, but in specifics to First Amendment auditing, that uh, you, you need to be understanding the game you're in to prepare and be prepared correctly. And I'll send you a link uh, to the gentleman's website. The first 30 minutes of the link I give you is what I'd appreciate for those of you that are doing this, well, should listen to. You need, I've told you, you need to do your work without get, putting yourself in jeopardy. First Amendment auditing is probably the most uh, out there type of, I don't mean an idea and concept. I'm talking about you're, you're hanging out there with liability very much more than I would have, uh, what I w- would agree to be needing at the beginning of all this. And I've told you how you, you change that. But a gentleman named uh, Damon Chief Jones has an, uh, a file called uh, Audit Tour Information and Talk. Uh, the first 30 minutes of this is his instruction, and he uh, claims to be a chief of police. I don't know anything about any of these people, but he's going to offer you some nuts and bolts. I didn't realize how how in jeopardy you folks are, but if you're in that much jeopardy, uh, he has some very good advice that I think you all need to listen to. And in a nutshell, for me, when I was hearing him say, you better go down and talk to a bails bondsman and get to know him real well, and you better have a lawyer on tap, and you better do this and that and the other that he's talking about, I realized that you guys may be outside of what you're actually supposed to be doing, and you're going to need that help. So you may speak about all these rights, but now you're having to go into that system of uh, in order to get protection. And that's okay. I told you there's a... Part of me says that before I started throwing off all these servitudes that we uh, agree to, these consensual things about permission, uh, like we hear licenses and permits and all this other stuff. So before I started throwing it off, the part of me says, you know, I could probably work easier inside the system with those things because at least I'd have some measure of protection. So there's a way to work in the system. There's a way not to. But I'm going to advise you not getting too much into this. I do not uh, advocate, I'm not saying this guy's website or uh, YouTube's contributions. I haven't even reviewed it. The first 30 minutes of this one tape is what I want you to hear. Uh, he talks to you about his position, what he thinks, how he goes about it, what he gets prepared. And when I was listening to it, I said, if you're in, if you guys are in that deep into that potential trouble and you're walking without a basic uh, situation in your mind about how this thing works, you're going to need all the systems protection uh, set up so that you don't, uh, you mitigate mitigate, not stop, but mitigate the harm that's going to befall you all. I don't want you to be afraid. I want you to be prepared. And so that's kind of what I'll I'll defer to him. He sounds pretty straight up. I don't have a, again, I don't know many people this way. I don't talk to him, but the advice was sound. He's, it's a, an adult conversation. So go, go with your adult ears, uh, you all, you, you adult insects that y'all are, you humans. Uh, no, go there and listen for the, the language will be a little bit uh, sharp. So uh, be prepared for that. But be prepared uh, with what you're doing. This is all what I talked to you about behind the woodshed. Understand the battlefield. Prepare for the battle that you're going to engage in. Understand the ramifications, the extent beyond what can happen. Understand that as well. And then come at it with your, hopefully, like any battle, you come at it with the least jeopardy, if, if any at all, to get accomplish the mission. I mean, it's one thing I've, if I learned something about when you fight uh, uh, when, when, like in um, medieval fighting, you get in armor and you beat on people. Well, you can come back and resurrect all this nonsense. It wouldn't happen in real life, but it gives you a sense that if someone is able, in, in actuality, can shoot you and kill you, you're done. Your approach becomes totally different than just playing a game. And that's the game I, I want you to rise up, up to. I want you to rise up to the fact that any one of these blows could mean your life. And when you're dealing with the cops, that's not an over an understatement. Okay, so anyway, this is the first guy. That I'm, I'll just send you this link later. Uh, Auditor information and talk the first 30 minutes. You, you need to take very serious understanding of what he's trying to tell you. And I think uh, apply what I'm telling you about really knowing your battlefield better. If you need that kind of, of, of fortification and shielding, you're into something you better know really, really, really well. And I never thought it was underneath that, but watching people approach it, it's it just seems so... Um, ad hoc and everyone wants to get over about how we're in my I'm in their face and all this says of it I'm going to tell you folks if you need this kind of shielding it's way beyond what you think you're, you're doing and I won't don't want to hear anybody getting in trouble because they weren't prepared this guy is telling you the starting of what I would even begin to, to start saying if I engage the system from what it offers uh, and I'm saying that if that's where you're at you better take on his advice here and protect yourself this is not a this is not a game. They may think you may think it is, or you may think that you're puffy chest about 
getting over on some so-called official about what they don't know. And what I'm looking at is a bunch of people don't know that they're being told what's right and they're approaching it wrong and that's going to get them in trouble. And pretty soon, pretty soon it's not going to get you in trouble. It's going to get you killed. And I don't want to hear about that later. I want you to know you need to take this. I, I know you take your rights serious, but you need to take how do you get them back serious. And it's not as a direct, uh, it may not be as direct as you think it is. You got to look at this a, a little better. Like I say, don't, don't put in your mind what you think ought to be. You better look at what the reality is and, and take it from, from that perspective. So moving, moving over also, you know, a little couple of things I'm going to tag into here in the past that I've discussed and a little concerned. Again, nothing to not, not do it. You do it prepared. You do it with a insight. You do it with the information that's maybe not disclosed to you. You go search it out. You go prepare like no one else may. Uh, you take as serious this, these battles. You take very seriously. You can be happy and jovial about it. You can have a great time with it. But, but behind the scenes, you're able to have a great time with it because behind the scenes, you've got con- all the contingencies that you could ever come up with dealt with and handled so you can focus on the task at hand. Uh, one of the things I've been concerned about, not because I don't like the idea or the or or that it's a neat not a neat thing, but it's what I I, I see it as a tool against uh, people, and it's even against what people ought to say that ought to be. Uh, but they continue to to work through it. This the thing with the cryptocurrencies. You know, it would make my, part of my mind says that this is you know, for me it would be great because I don't have a way to make uh, I don't have a way to make money. Uh, and a cryptocurrency would look like a really cool deal for for me to be able to be able to have value transferred from here to here there wherever uh, digitally. So to me it's a it would be a great tool. The problem is is with the, my, the insight that I have over decades, I saw it as a tool against us. It's a weapon. And uh I wasn't I couldn't and haven't been able to put the time into it to really look to find the narrow path in order to pick up which type to do and how to keep it safe and secure. So in the general and where this thing goes for people generally, it's I'm advocating against its utility or to embrace it Other, uh, if you can't, unless you can privatize it. And I, I mean, you're going to have to look very carefully at how to privatize this. In fact, there's a Twitter um, communication about, about this implying the gold and silver money and this and that and the other with a question that everyone is missing this question it's a very important question where do cryptocurrencies fit in all this stuff this uh, the constitutional ought to be's and all this and that and that's a very serious and important question to get answered that i think the people that are responding showing what ought to be are missing the point because uh, what happened is there may be ought to be but there's a way that if you look very carefully how they made like a parallel universe uh, they made uh, they redefined things so that they didn't have to qualify everything through that constitution. And then I get to hear to my time, in my time, when I'm looking over decades, and I notice they did it again. They did it in this thing we called the consensus process. And so there's a parallelization of what goes on, and it's no longer in those things that you thought. It's been justified to be other places of foundational authority, and you're missing the point. But the question is, where do cryptocurrencies, given that we're supposed to have gold and silver money, where does cryptocurrencies fit? I've told you that these cryptocurrencies will be re, will be slowly moved after they get you to plug in like silent weapons of quiet wars. They're going to get you into uh, needing it. This dependency will be developed up. If it's, be it, when you get it, when they get everybody beyond the, the, the gambling part of this thing, which is also a cool thing, feeds into a bunch of what we, what we are. But they're going to get it into where it becomes denominated as debt. And I want to point out here, here it comes. Here's the proof of that. I've told you before that the bit, the blockchain technology was being attached to property. We talked about Cook. I think it was Cook or Crook. It should be Crook County. Everyone should be Crook County. Attaching property to the blockchain. We heard of that in Texas. I said uh, mortgages. I said, watch out. This thing is being attached to the financial and monetary system. That monetary system is no longer under the foundation of the Constitution. They scooted it out and they stuck it under commerce and contract. And so be careful, those of you that think of what you see ought to be. What ought to be would be the way you you do it. Not the way you extend and extrapolate it out to where others would do it. You follow that 
ought to be. That's what I would say. Go to silver and gold as money. You do it. Find your core groups of people. and We should expand that. I've been advocating that forever. But when we get into these things called cryptocurrencies and fiat currencies and all that, uh, we're we're into the realm of commerce and at least one thing we're into. And I'm just going to keep it simple for this broadcast. But uh, Seminole County, here's the here it coming, folks. It's done being now denominated as blockchain and a cryptocurrency and Bitcoin and Bitcash is being denominated as a fiat debt system uh, by one county, only one county, utilizing it as such. And it just came through the, the Twitter sphere, I think, or whatever I got. I don't remember where I get this anymore. Just so, Folks, I, I had so many tabs this week, a half of them are left on my other browser, and I don't, you're going to get only part of what I gave you tonight, uh, last night, I set up last night. There's just so much to talk about. It, I'm just uh, like I'm looking at this as just like a, literally the tidal wave, and I've got to be very careful not to succumb to it. I have to get back on my little surfboard and start surfing this tidal wave and find a better find a better place on it because ye, I'm not so sure everyone understands what what's happening to them. But here it is, Seminole County, Florida. You know, we talked about Cook County, Chicago. We talked about uh, Texas. I told I pointed all this blo- this blockchaining of property and and your and your taxation system I've, so I've shown you the IRS was involved early on I said watch out this is coming in through your debt system your fiat system it's going to be denominated as a debt system Seminole County Florida tax collector uh, Joel M. Greenberg announced May 14th that the county will begin accepting cryptocurrency for payment for various services this summer in order to eliminate heavy fees and improve payment accuracy and efficiency I told you they were going to come in under this heavy fee stuff and all this nonsense. They're going to tell you get it promoted, but the point—it's not even the point. The point is that a county is now going to accept for tax payments and fee payments. Payments. When you have to understand what this jurisdiction is, where are these fees going to? What do they do? It's all consistent. It's all consistent, and you got to keep track of this thread. According to the press release, the county will be accepting Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash to pay for services including property taxes, driver's license, and ID cards fees, as well as tags and titles. The Seminole County tax collector will reportedly employ blockchain payments company BitPay, which will allow the county to receive settlement Settlement, folks. Jeez, these words. The next co- a business day directly to its bank account in U.S. dollars. Greenberg commented uh, on the initiative, quote, listen, this is from a county, but listen to the scope of his re- re- reach now. We live in a world where technology has been made uh, access to services on demand, the same day delivery and the expectation of highly efficient customer service, and we should expect the same from our government. The aim of my tenure in office is to make our customer experience faster, smarter, and more efficient, and to bring government services from eighth from the eighteenth century into the twenty first century, and one way is the addition of cryptocurrency to our payment options. Now, I'm going to stop right there. You need, you need to, then they go on to all the benefits and to talk about fraud and all this. The whole thing's a big fraud. So this is a lie that that's a benefit of the fraud. It's non-disclosure of what's going on here. Uh, the point is that they're attacking, they're attaching Bitcoin to the debt system for the payment of taxes and fees in that commercial debt system. This was presaged by the IRS interest in it, and I told you that. And so here's the first evidence, folks. You can you can just kind of la-la land this thing in the Bitcoin and the cashless society that they're bringing on and all the so-called benefit. Uh, but you have to understand and watch. And maybe if you did nothing more, maybe you should just sit back and watch as you agree with this. Watch how they did it to you. Watch the, the tsunami come onto you. Uh, and, and using what I see as, as an instruction to start looking where to look inside the tsunami on how to identify that it's a tsunami. This is the, the future, folks. This is what the, I've been telling you. They've been making this. This technology was a plan. It's a weapon. And uh, if you've heard my pro- and I'm not going to talk more about the other broadcasts about the property. This is divesting you of your property on a global scale. World technology, the technocrats. 
And I told you before uh, with the Texas, in particular the Texas, we saw it in the cook where they're talking about all the partners. But in Texas, they specifically said a third party would be handling this. It's not even in the government anymore. And I've told you the one who controls that blockchain controls that property. And then the problem with that is that there was no original documentation. And you saw in the MERS problem, original documentation is the only thing that saves the property. And I've told you that they learn, these people that do this method, learn through the process how to interfere and get around the uh, the checks and balances that were in our system, at least in the United States of America, for property. They look at the, these people are brilliant at looking at a problem that they have and figuring out a way around it. Well, we see that happening in loopholes that attorneys use, right? And, you'll, and a corporation can keep itself from being liable and accountable because it's got a bunch of good attorneys of the of the words. So again, I just uh, I can't I don't know what else to say. It's right here. In fact, I'm looking at a paragraph. They're talking about the Department of Revenue for the state. This is IRS. You think the Department of Revenue of the state is state? No, that's connected to the federal. There's nothing not connected to the federal here, and it's being denominated in a federal. Doll, uh, fiat note amount, and that's the other problem. And yet, if you go look at the statutes, you see what they can't demand. Uh, this is not even one of them. They're going to get around that lack of demand that nobody uses is that they're trying to demand. Well, what do you demand for payment? They can't tell you that it's an FRN because it's to be illegal for them to demand an FRN because it doesn't pay. But now they don't even have to worry about that argument. We used to give them 20 years ago. They're just going to just take it in this electronic currency, and you have a phone, don't you? Oh, yeah, we see that you do, and we see you're standing right there. Oh, no, you're at your sink. Oh, yeah, I got the map now. Yeah, oh, you were just picking daisies in your garden here just five minutes ago, right? Yeah, that's you. Okay, we got you. That's right. Yeah, no, we can help you. We got your number. So, I mean, this is coming down. Now. I'm looking. I'm just looking through part of this now. I just wanted to read the introduction, but now it's already in California, uh, the blockchain, blockchain technology in community projects. Folks, that's Agenda 21. That's sustainable development. These are the public financing for community projects is leverage funding. And they, they take this, they privatize the property, and they put it under contract, and you're not going to get your rights. In fact, I think I heard Gary L. talking about uh, this last week on his broadcast, with Bree G's Brew on the Road Less Traveled two hours after this broadcast on the RLM network. Uh, they were talking about this very problem. With with this uh, divorce, divor you just don't have access to your rights to live in a place. And I predicted to you, but the cost of the live places to live back when the 2008 bubble, when the, we started seeing the ramifications, when I come on the on the broadcast, finally got broadcasting. I told you to be careful. What they're going to do is get rid of all the housing. You saw the housing going away. Where's all those people going to go? That was going to raise the cost of rental housing, and the homelessness is going to go up. That's all part of the plan. They force you, and then they're going to give you this this projects, these new community projects, based on the thieving from the pro current property owners uh, through leverage funding mechanisms to put these projects in and privatize your access to property and take away your rights. Stack them and pack them projects. It, it's just rolling out, right? And they're using blockchain in order to do that. So enough for there. You, those of you that just close me off when I say this, I, I just uh, you, you don't even listening to me, and those that you don't understand, you, you don't care. Uh, and those that listen to it, you're going to say, well, what do we do about it? Uh, okay, well, what do you do about it? You make sure you don't get into involved with getting into pro renting private property. You go live in a tent or right outside of the private projects, right? Uh, you uh, start using gold and silver coin money. Real, Start getting tangible with people. Stop talking, uh, using the so non -unsocial, UN social network to be non-social. Be sitting divided. You're divided even by your keyboard. You, no one understands the, 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 the psychological effect of what we're watching. It's fascinating. I, at one point, I'm just like, this is pretty, this is, what a Petri dish. Uh, but what the terror here. How far away we are from what I remember uh, society being. It's just a, a, a phenomenon on its own. And it was all avoidable. Every bit of it. And the fact that we haven't avoided it is a testament to uh, our ignorance or, I don't even want to call it apathy. We're watching it. So it's not like it's going underneath our sight. We're just not responding to it. And I, and I suspected, maybe if at least friends of mine uh, suspected, if I could get on w to tell people about what, what I could see, what I was written right there for us to know, uh, that may, and, and because people weren't quite, quite a focused on it, 
maybe that would turn things around and we'd fix this this thing or at least start to mend it a lot better and a lot faster. Boy, that was a pipe dream. I'm sitting here, I don't even know, remember 10 years down the road and hardly anybody gets it. Hardly anybody actually applies it for any or any for any length of time. And this is an ongoing battle. Uh, this has been going on for decades and decades and decades at the imposition of this starting of this block or that we see as a blockchain today is the agenda 21 technocracy coming on us that i was fighting against back in the 90s i didn't know it as technocracy then i saw it as like leverage funding i saw it as a special well the public private partnerships and that wasn't even me making that up they told us that in the 90s early early 90s when they started to implement this public private partnerships in earnest not as a concept now, I can see public-private partnerships going all the way back. It just depends on what you finally acknowledge to be a, pro a private, private entity but working in a public capacity. The Bar Association is one of the worst. Go back, go back to the, go way back for that one. And so we've had, it's not about the public-private partnership, it's that, that it works. And we, it's, it falls underneath our, our perception. It's transparent. This, this the harm and invasion is transparent to us. And so the bar, I can bring up the bar association because it's integral with all that's going on. Integral. There's no place you go around inside most of the functions of society that a bar member somewhere is not going to be having to be uh, giving advice. And that's another fear, uh, sitting, settled, settled fear thing that sits in there without no one talking about it. It works on the same principle. You don't need quotas. Just tell someone they're going to lose their job if they don't write tickets. You don't have to have a quota. The guy will start writing, writing, the cop will write tickets, won't he? Supreme Court rules an inmate whose lawyer conceded guilt. The Supreme Court ruled Monday that a lawyer for a criminal defendant cannot override his client's wish to maintain his innocence at trial, even if the lawyer's aim is to avoid a death sentence. What did I tell you about some of these, uh, these uh, what we call the, you know, maybe these hoax shooting things? And uh, the attorneys would come in and throw the client under the bus to to gain uh, so they could avoid the death sentence. I said that was all wrong. Here's the court. Here's the Supreme Court case. Is that your consent to this is important? The attorneys cannot throw you under the bus. But look at what they do. Look how many times you've heard that uh, to avoid a death sentence that the uh, the client will get thrown under that bus. And no one said anything up until this one case here. I want to read it more. I mean, I don't have to read a lot of this. You, you, this is supposed to, this is a system of consent, even though they don't, it doesn't look like it. When you plea into a court for an arraignment, that's what you're doing. You're giving your consent to that jurisdiction to do what it's going to do to you. I mean, I pause here. If you understood exactly what, what that, the ramification of that and applied that to all the places that this happens to us, we would probably be a lot better society to start with, just to start with, because we'd be asking the right, we'd be right, asking the right avoidance questions. And it wasn't be the ask as a question. It's an imposition of a, of a requirement that's missing. And what I tell you is what is known, as known to me is pre-plea remedies and avoidance. In avoidance of what? In avoidance of the jurisdiction attempting to do you in. And you don't plea there. You plea, your plea is an agreement with what's coming up next for you. It's like an application. You sign it, you're, you're agreeable to that point. And there's not a lot enough of us that are outside of that, on that position to say, to find out that they're going to beat down on you anyway. Now that gets us back to the title 42, 1981 stuff, but notwithstanding that, that's where you start to fight what the real battle is. Because they now are infringing on all kinds of stuff they weren't supposed to be able to do, which is to reach out and grab you and throw you in their jurisdiction, within their power. Now you see the real beast when you start doing it over there, before all this. But anyway, getting back to the point of this, I explained to you that uh, it was wrong that these uh, attorneys were making statements before uh, even arraignment or before a hearing or even after that their client had done something that, uh, that would make it reduce, the, that would uh, literally just agree that they'd done what they'd done. The attorneys were never supposed to, to, to they're supposed to, even if they know their, their clients are wrong, they're supposed to defend them and try to get them off. And now, how quickly it changed. You know, how, many, how many of these mass shootings have you heard that the, the killer 
they, they, the attorneys come in and just throw the, the, the client under the bus. Oh, he did some stuff. And I said, well, that's not, that's just, that's just signed his non-death warrant. He's going to be in life imprisonment. He just, they just gave it up. Well, here's the court case, folks. What ought to be didn't happen. So someone had to challenge it. Well, it's written right here in the Constitution. It ought to say, it ought to be like this. Well, but it's not, folks. They've moved us so far. They've moved this goalpost and justified it. And so it's like in a whole different ballpark. Not even a, not even the, the function that it was supposed to do, but everyone thinks it is. And your ought is, is just, just that. It's just a statement of a question and, and it's not going to be of any substance. They ought not to throw their client under the bus, but they have been. Took a court case, go all the way to the Supreme Court and lucky for this guy. That you can't, as a as an attorney, throw your client under the bus. So I look around and say, that's all I see the attorneys doing. You have you, you you have to have a consent. No, this doesn't. The arm the arm twisting by the prosecutor is not addressed here, because that's how they get your consent. But your defense attorney is supposed to be your defense attorney. They're not supposed to make the decisions on what is really going to be going for the jury ahead of time. And they can't take away if you wish that you don't want uh, that you want to remain innocent, so called. You want to maintain your innocence, which is you don't, which is another lie. But notwithstanding that, the attorney cannot uh, make a, a setup, a take make statements or actions that defeat that. And so there's a certain things working, certain things don't. If you don't challenge these things you get rolled down the they go with the future that they want the way they work that the way i can tell you notwithstanding I, we'd read it a long time before was that was more of a reflexive administrative court in its due process the process that it was not due the process that was due being done was more reflexive to a condition and more reflexive to a perception it wasn't judicial and that should tell you another thing. I mean, if that's what they're going to, then most of what you're watching in these courts, and notwithstanding my opinion or what I can show you in the statutes, you're not watching judicial courts. And the, the rules will tell you that, but it's not neither here nor there about this discussion. I don't want to fire up everybody's kidneys over, oh, yeah, that's right, there's no judge. No, there's a, there's, it's not just saying that. It's being able to identify how that is. So the attorneys are not supposed to be doing these things to throw to go against their consent and we don't even touch the the problem with this prosecution side where they they twist your arm break your arm off and to, to get that consent uh, but but here it is folks if you didn't understand what i was saying about watching someone stand up there and have their attorney agree that they had done no uh, he he's uh, what was that one conversation the last one what was it the florida one he he understands the uh, the, the 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 weight the gravity of his actions that, that was totally wrong you can't do that And so we're watching. We're watching the demise of our system. And no one really steps up to protect them. Do you think I'm protecting the guy who shoots a bunch of people? No, it's not about that. He'll get his due, I suppose. But but we we can't be as a people allowing the witness of something that's so degraded that it doesn't it's just fun, it doesn't even function. It just it's just people making work for themselves. And they all have to be of the same uh, membership as well. And don't forget the judges that are making the decisions. They're all part of that system. And so you get to the to the point of that system, and they're saying, no, no, you, we gotta we gotta main one thing we will maintain, and this is a one thing we will maintain is that we want to make sure we get their consent, nice and clear. As long as we get their consent, we can do what we need, and that's when we get to the arraignment. They get your arraignment. You understand the charges. I care less about do you stand under the charge. It's irrelevant what's going on. It, you're giving power to the to the jurisdiction is what the worst part of that is. If I stand under the charges, it's irrelevant. If it's not, you can stand under the charges. It's not relevant to the jurisdiction. What you're arranging is that they have authority to hear and determine that under whatever charge. There could be any charges. And you're standing there answering because you didn't do something you were supposed to do prior to that to challenge whether or not they could. I'm not saying they can't. I'm saying that you didn't make your challenge to it. At least when you're inside, they can't just take your intention to be innocent and turn it into 
manage it in order to look into the future and try to say that oh, we don't we want to avoid a, a harsher penalty. You got to look at and I would say don't just stop thinking there. You got to think about this too. Think about that when you put someone in that position too. They want to maintain their innocence and to do so they're looking at the death penalty. And you know that system's not nice, so it's not a good thing. Not a good thing. The whole again it may sound like I'm advocating something. I'm not. I'm saying we've got to lay out some principle here, and it'd be better. You've got to hold to it. Well, this case says that we're going to hold to consent. We've got to get their consent in some form. They. We have to get their. That means you, the enemy combatant. We have to get their consent. Since they haven't avoided us, that we're going to get their consent that we can do whatever we want to them. Then we can sleep at night with a clear conscience. How insidious is this, uh, this psychopo- psychopathy? is is pretty fascinating. And we keep putting up with it. Another thing I was talking about, just keep moving on here. It take, takes so long to talk about some of this stuff. UN votes to declare Trump Jerusalem decision null and void. As I told you before, they did that before. Uh, this was um, like old news. Uh, the point is, is that the thing that's happening in Jerusalem, the abomination that's happening there, after even after Obama, uh, the unqualified one, the is, again, without law, without support. And if you want to see the fractal of your life uh, locally to you in the world, look at all the people that are against what's going on uh, with uh, Israel and Jerusalem and and the United States and see it still happening. It is our problem. Uh, And that's a fractal that belongs in your town. That same type problem is happening in your town. That's why it's happening out in the world. Uh, So, in a humiliating blow to Donald Trump on the world stage, the United Nations General Assembly has voted by 128 to 9 to declare the controversial decision to recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital null and void. It didn't seem to matter, does it? And this is the thing you find about lack of enforcement. And this is where you find that I've been telling you the world has become just this big, whoever is big enough to move on forward is, is, it's sheer violence. Just sheer violence. There's no, there's nothing in your life right now uh, that is actually judicial. There's no law. And I told you that over and over. I told you that, what, 2012, I think I finally felt comfortable to tell everybody because it was in that memo, memo at 2010. And I couldn't quite, I didn't know whether or not the, the total government would be complicit with it. Well, it did. By 2012, it was pretty clear. That the memo, the murder memo, was said, you're all, you, all of y'all are men enemy combatants, and we get to decide how we're going to treat you. And there's no, uh, there's indefinite detention when we say we can just, we can kill you on the spot if we want to. We're not going to even, we're not going to listen to law. We're going to go extrajudicial. We have no need for law. We're going to do ju- uh, 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 executive expedience. We're not going to even look at the guidelines set up in the oxymoronic law of war, the Libra Code, anymore. I told you this, law, how many years has it been now? That This is where it is. This is where we are today. You're watching the uh, in Israel what what this lawlessness and lack of accountability. And I've told you, those people, anybody that's going to do that, if, like the United States, or you people in the United States, they're going to do it. They're doing it to you. You just don't recognize how they're doing it. You make up what ought to be. And you think that's enough. When I'm telling you there's a real insurrection that's happened, there's been, you've been insur- uh, infiltrated and surrounded, and you're really an occupied people. You live in the open-air prison. I told you that Gaza was reflecting to us. We are living in that open-air prison. We just don't have the destruction in the obvious ways. Your water's no good. Your buildings, your industrial complexes are all good. You can't go anywhere without giving your papers. You get beat up. Uh, you can't You can't even have a cell phone that they want you to have if it's not quite the right time against someone who fears for his life. And everybody thinks that's fine. I don't get that, but there it is. So here's this problem, this reflection of how degraded, how de- despotic it's really gotten in our face, and why. Uh, and, and also the time that we're living in is one of deceit and fraud, and how, again, you keep sitting how what ought to be. We're so far into crime, you, you better stop talking about what ought to be, and you better stop the crime. And you got to work out ways on how that's going to happen because they're bigger than you. It's brute force against you. 
And this is where I keep suggesting as we move down through the years, is started, okay, a small group of us can do it, maybe a little bit bigger group, or we can do the mining district. Oh, now we got to use the nation. Well, now the whole world is involved as this uh, this criminality, this cockistocracy of governance across the world uh, as a cancer is now metastasized in, in real, the hot spot being over there in Jerusalem. I uh, wanted to, a couple of things I noticed before I shut down, uh, I stopped looking at Twitter here the last few days uh, to, to look, focus on other things. A couple of reoccurring informations that I think important to put in your bag of facts with the deception that goes on, with the gaming that goes on, with, uh, we know these things, uh, controlled opposition that just developed. Uh, there are a lot of people that are supporting Trump and supporting this invasion and this occupation and the concentration camp called Gaza and the Golan Heights, the, the occupation of a land that's foreign to Israel, and the agreement that they can do that, and then we find out that there's oil, all this this agreement with all this this, this invalidity, all this lawlessness. Uh, a lot of questions come out, well, in the protests, what about Hamas? Hamas caused them all. Uh, Hamas uh, said most 80% of the people that the Israeli snipers sniped were Hamas. Well, I want you to remember and know, and I've got some links for you, how this game gets played and this controlled opposition that gets created. And I'm not an expert at all this. You can probably find people, certainly find people that will talk about it more and more in depth than I will ever consider it. I don't need to know more. I just know what happens. I look for it. And Hamas was helped to be and created by Israel to begin with. They took a natural dynamic and they put it as a they put it in opposition to the PLO and the Palestinians, and they're using the Hamas as a tool. And I'll have the links for the, for those of you that are interested to watch how organizations get other organizations to make it to make it look like they are an authority when they're actually a tool of the people that are the invasion, the occupier. Hamas is a creation of Israel in order to control the PLO and be that excuse. They're the cover for Israel's actions. And so when you see Hamas saying, oh, well, we say 85% of the people were Hamas members, isn't that, and so that's supposed to give uh, credence to the Israeli snipers for killing women and children and medics, and the other few percentage that are not Hamas, well, that's an Israeli tool saying that. Why wouldn't they say, oh, well, 85% of those were Hamas anyway? Were they shooting themselves? No, that was just a propaganda statement to try and give credibility to a lawless sniping of innocent people and so just you guys folks you can read this for yourself to find the truth or you can listen to all the nonsense i see going on that's keeping us divided i try to send out twitter to try and explain the thing the other point about about the well hamas was was causing this no hamas is not causing it uh the the well what about what about the um why are the children on the protest side or the, with the clash Really, this is just ignorant speaking. Now, it's not that I know so much, but I pay attention. Hamas was created by Israel to oppose a condition that sits inside of the, uh, of the occupied uh, concentration camp that they control, which they have no right to control. That the concentration camp is such that you cannot, there's no place for the children to go. And you'll get that, you know, if I think I got the link for, for that, was the RT program where Ahmad Tamimi's father is explaining why the children are out there. And the children, is, if you listen very carefully, I don't know how you don't, really feel for these people, even if you had no concept about it. They're out there because there's nowhere else for them to go. The Palestinian fathers and mothers who do love their children, as he'll tell you, tried to hide the kids in places. And the Israeli inside go inside the concentration camp and seek them out and then harm them. And so the mothers and fathers said, Two things. One, we can't hide them now. Number one. Number two is they suffer like we do. They suffer from lack of food, lack of medical care, lack of water, lack of electricity, lack of schooling, lack of this, lack of that, lack of everything because of Israel. 
And so since they are part of the society, notwithstanding how young they are, and that we are still being attacked and we can't hide them, we'll just bring them with us wherever we go. Why? Because we live in a concentration camp, not a protest site. And those of you that have hardened your heart against this condition by trying to make these excuses, oh, it was Hamas, or they don't have a right to put their children on the front line, you are deluded. And you need to pull back a little bit and start looking at what's going on there. Israel has a fence around a place that they don't have the right to put the fence on because they don't have the land. And then they go over and they get the bully called the United States to protect them to take half of Jerusalem. You want to explain to me if they were actual Israelites, why they'd get half and not one twelfth? If it was legitimate? Anybody miss that one? I've been hanging that one out. When you look at the actual Israelites, not the Israelis, but the Israelites, who would have a bit, if it is Jerusalem they have a right to, as an Israelite, isn't that just one of the twelve, one twelfth of the twelve tribes? So they couldn't take half anyway. And I hope you appreciated the way to delineate the pre and the post-1948 Jew. The mere ability to speak Hebrew does not give you right to the land, which is the post-48 Israeli. The pre-48 Israelite not only speaks a language, but is part of all the tribes and of many peoples from those tribes. And I think I identified a quick way to be able to delineate in this problem how it's a big problem. It's not so simple that someone come and say, well, Hamas done it. Or that even Israel created Hamas. Because Israel isn't, and an Israeli is not an authority here. They do not have the right to the land. And no no government has recognized that. And so I'm uh, dismayed a bit how we can stay divided on this issue when if we expect ourselves to be treated correctly, we can watch a people being mistreated so terribly, lit, pushed and forced into concentration camps. And this is not unique around the world or through history, but the point is we continue to, to allow it. It's a reflection on us. And I'm asking us how we expect more from uh, for our way of life than what we allow to others. And then we look at our life and we say, isn't that what we're getting? It may not be as bad, but aren't we getting very close? Our servitudes are just a little different. And maybe if we expected more for ourselves, we'd expect more for others. And why wouldn't we? Anyway. It just uh, drives me nuts when I see people supporting and not supporting and don't even get down to the bottom line. And for me, it really boils down to some the land stuff. That's pretty simple for me to get at because I'm not that intelligent somehow. I can't keep up anymore with all this stuff. And it's made to do that, but I, I also realize I don't have to keep up. I just got to find my way, my little my little handle on how I understand how this works. And I'll hold on to that, that part that's foundational and I can, I can understand and, and can protect it, if you will, uh, with an understanding and looking for the better answer. And as long as there's no better answer coming, I'm pretty capable to make sure that that's where I'm going to stay. I don't have to know so much. I just need to know that much. Once I know that much, I can realize uh, there's a very lo huge, huge, huge wrong going on here. And as soon as you give a bit of right to either side, You've, you've agreed to the sides, and there are none here at this point. And so this, this issue with Israel uh, being, being protected to take half of, Pal of, of Jerusalem, uh, a city that was cut apart, separated from the mass because of its religious importance, was supposed to maintain separation. That's another problem going on cannot be okay with people and it cannot and cannot be justified by anyone and, and if it was if it was israelites claiming that they wanted their 112th i would probably have a lot less to say about this but it's not it's 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 a israeli 
occupation being handed half of what they're not entitled to. And they couldn't be entitled if they even were, were the people that were entitled. And I'm saying all this stuff to lay this out this way because if you're going to have discussions to try and get the information out, as I keep telling you, you have to have a, your bag of facts have to be dead on and they have to be pretty simple. And they have to be pretty core. They don't have an inroad to a discussion. As I say, you don't present a case that's a question. You don't create an issue for someone to decide. Without an issue, there's no one that can decide. Remember I tell you about going to the court, don't hand them an issue, you hand them a finished point. There's nothing to decide. The parties have to decide between them. That's called the default. If you listen to my to what I'm saying, you realize you should realize there's a different way to approach all this stuff. And what ought to be does start to happen. It's your lack of your complaint of what ought to be instead of doing what you do should be doing is what continues the question of why it ought to be. In other words, just to put it back to the coinage stuff, if you're if you're going to try and get us back to the constitutional money, it only says the state can't do anything but silver and gold. It doesn't talk about the feds. But let's focus in on the state if you're going to live within the state. Well, then you start using silver and gold. Don't go over to the fiat stuff. Don't participate in the products of the commerce system and mortgages. Don't do any of that. Don't get uh, debt accounts. Work in contracts that are straight together. I mean, you have to, you, each one of you have to do this. That's the only way that'll start to happen. Maybe it's not as convenient, but that's what the that's one of the say a big sales pitches are. It's more convenient, less expensive. They don't tell you what the expense is. That's not a that's a, that's a fraudulent statement. You can't even evaluate, evaluate the cost of what they're doing against you. But when it means your way of life, when it means your property, when it means your ability to protect your property, which means you, you haven't even begun to understand the costs and that statement about how he how efficient how less expensive it is as a fees to do the transactions is a lie so we can tell stories amongst ourselves uh, just remember Hamas is a creation of Israel a uh, controlled opposition uh, the children they're stuck they're, that's a concentration camp and Israel doesn't have a right to build the wall they built the wall and now it's fish in a barrel. The kids can't go anywhere. Remember, they couldn't even play on the play on the beach. They couldn't even play volleyball. What happened? Israel sent a munition in and killed them while they're playing soccer, I think it was. Kid, little boy babies. Like they were a big threat. They shelled a beach that was had kids playing on it for soccer. Is that is that good enough for us? Does that, that make it all right? Where do you put the kids when they can drop a bomb on their head? When you gather them up, put them someplace safe, and they get attacked. Where are those kids going to go? Isn't it better just to have them running around? And who are you to put on how they defend their, their, their sons and daughters in that condition? Who? Who are you? This is the other thing that gets, get, just gets me. This is the same thing as the, the future we want. These people that are sustainable development. We're going to make the rules about what's, uh, what's rational and right and logical, whatever all this. It's not logical. It's irrational. It's based on, the, on their, their feelings and triggers, little snowflakes. Where, who are you to put any kind of an imposition on anybody who's under attack like they are? Kind of gets me too. Why are we such a people everywhere that we think we have an opinion better than those people that are being attacked and defending themselves? I think you need to look at yourself, yourself, when you think, if you think you have an opinion about the children that are being shot on the front lines of a war zone uh, that is made by the sniper uh, to be that way. WikiLeaks put out uh, some information on on this to show more uh, cables that were done. I have links for for this for those of you that, that want to see it. 
I want you to have the, the evidence to hand anybody. I don't even have to argue. Here's the facts of what's, what you're talking about. You know, Hamas, no, they were created by Israel. Children, no, the snipers go after and kill them. Uh, the, the, the Israeli government tra- tracks, tracks them down and kills them. Uh, so the, so that they are not protectable. And then those people that have a problem with that, they can go work on that problem, but at least you've brought the facts without an argument. As the media will and does whitewash the Gaza massacre. See, they're saying clashes and you know conflicts. No, this is a massacre. Uh, I think uh, iconic picture: guy without legs in a wheelchair slinging a slinging a stone like uh, David and Goliath. David going to sling a stone? Well, he got shot and killed. Well, he was a real threat. Well, that was a pretty good picture because that's what this thing's about. And until people kind of get that and they listen to this whitewashing that goes on, I even think the word whitewash here is a is an understatement. But the U.S. media, all those people that are being spoken to, you'd be able to speak to that. You don't have to vilify the media. Just say they're white. They're they're whitewashing this thing. Here here's a here's a here's a point. Here's something you might want to look at. Here's an issue you might want to consider. Why? Because as a people, we're allowing it as a people. And that's a problem in us. So we're not going to get better. We're not going to get better. I'm going to say it again. We're not going to get better. And I'm not going to even expect that we are. For as much as I want to think that we are, for as, as a shocked as I am that we're, I'm still doing crickets. It's the truth. This thing in God is really just a symptom of the people of the United States and other places in the world as well. And it's it's so bad that we're watching things that as I was growing up, those that were were th- countries to really not to, not to vilify, are now looking like the white knights. Is how bad and inverted this whole thing has gotten. Is a reflection on us. Uh, another report comes out: Israeli army official admits IDF failed to minimize. Gaza casualties. Okay, fine, great. I mean, what are they doing with stating like that? What does an occupier, what excuse does an occupier need? That's not my opinion. The United the United Nations a group of people that thought they were getting together to create peace acknowledges this is just an occupation, and they can't they can't authorize it to be settled in the land. That's why it can't be. That an officer of the occupier says, oh, we failed to minimize ca- ca- Gaza casualties. What? Did we need that to be told to us? They're shooting women and children, and they got targets of shooting pregnant women where the baby is, not just wounding these people, shooting medics. Did we need him to come out, this uh, IDF uh, guy, to come out and tell us that he, they didn't minimize? No. But this is just more propaganda to keep stirring the pot and keep us ineffectual about what we're going to do with it, if there is anything. My view is you better start understanding what it really is. I mean, someone who's more well more popular than I am writes about why I talked about the excuse, talking about to remind everybody this is the West Bank and Hamas has no presence there. Remember that. There's no presence in Hamas. It's Syrian. So what excuse does Israel have for beating women, medics, and wounded people? And I ask, what excuse does an occupier need? I keep saying that, and I think, okay, you said that enough. I, you need to see the occupier in your land. It's not just over there. If you're going to ask about excuses from occupation, you're asking them for an answer for how they abuse you, not taking action to take get rid of it. So the answer about what's going on with all the children being shot and and, and the, what are the medics going to do, stand by while their people are getting hurt? This is really a, a sickness in people that have this expectation that they can go away from, their, they can be uh, all of a sudden swim out of the barrel the fish are caught in. There, there's no, for these children, there's no choice, nowhere to hide uh, from a psychopathic occupier. I've got the link for the, uh, video for you. It's explained by the father of um, Ahed Tamimi, 
uh, about this and you listen very carefully, uh, these people are really out of out of any answers. And the world is not helping them. And they're not helping them against an, an, an admitted, an admitted occupier. And so the UN fails here too, folks, if you haven't put these together. Not because, oh, the UN needs us, it's no good. I'm saying the purpose for the UN is shown to be a failure right now. Right? I mean, not right now. I mean, now it's done. There's no thing that that organization can do to stop an atrocity this huge. And we still think that there's a discussion to be had is our problem. And it's so deeply seated in our psyche now, this sickness. The state of the United States actually comes up and makes a law that if you criticize Israel, it'll be a crime. 60 protesters barely in the ground, and South Carolina sneaks in law to make illegal any criticism of Israel and its behavior. Now, we've heard about this. We've heard. We've heard about. A, I've heard understand, understand a BDS movement. And all this. Since when does anybody in a legislature have the right to to interfere with your thoughts or your speech or your concepting of the world? And since when does that same legislature have the right to commit a lie, a fraud, in the implementation of such a thing to recognize what the United what the United Nations as a body of nations recognize as a foreign occupier that hasn't proven the right to the land? is the epitome, in a nutshell, of our problem in the United States of America. And again, I read on. I want to read. I don't want to read. Here's a link. I mean, if you guys, some of you are interested, you get the links. A lot of you don't. So I don't even know what to do at some time. I look at some of the responses, and I just don't even know what I'm, what I'm speaking to here. The information is here to build a case. Any one of group of you or a few of you wanted to make the case on this point, not all everyone has to do this, but you would have a formidable place to start anymore in order to make the most powerful arguments to start pushing back in the right ways and get people involved under the, the unrighteousness of how this is uh, how this is coming down in the country that's uh, supposed to be the shining beacon for freedom of expression. I don't even know what to say here about that. It's so pathetic, and it's criminal. And they snuck it in. There's another facet. They snuck it in on an appropriations bill. And clearly it's unconstitutional, but see, the Bar Association and the, and, and the, and the legislators, they have figured out how to get this stuff through, and now you have to go fight what should have never been put on a law. On its face, it should have never been put up as a law. I mean, I, my mind has wants to talk about all kinds of stuff here, and I just there's just no time to talk about it. There's no real reason, in a way, either. Uh, you either hear me and, and work in, in these whatever areas areas inspire you, or you're not. I mean, I got lots of ideas, but they pale in comparison to anybody who's actually focused on this information. I just don't have. I cannot focus as well on every little thing that I need to to be have to bring the the statements of power. That are available. I can just see. I can see them as I'm like tearing through all this information, and then how that works out in remedy. And there's lots of different. I'm not talking court remedy. I'm talking about perception. I'm talking about uh, getting the you know word out, getting the word out to generally in the media, uh, how, how to uh, set up even the legislators, uh, how to make it all make it look bad, expose. How, how bad the system is that allows this. This is kind of what we did in the 2013 lawsuit. You know, if I had a, we had never stopped and I tried to address the moratorium against the miners and deal with the legislation coming through the legislature, I would have never been able, from the outside, there's no way to see how they actually do the destructive, destruction. I would have never seen how they take these imp- these bills that look like they're disparate and separate and put them, push them through and they all look innocent. 
and yet there are actually parts and pieces that get pulled together by people who know that they're coming and assembled on the other side of the governmental function to come and brutalize people. I'd have never seen that. And yet watching this thousands of bills come through and having to even just sift through a few that we were interested in, I started, your mind starts to pick up parts and pieces of how it starts to work. Your mind picks up things, fascinating things, without you even paying attention to it. And all of a sudden, they just gel into an idea. And we've allowed that as a society. We've allowed third parties to make this law. Yo, it's not so much of a secret. We're lobbying is the most obvious function of that, the lobbying. But what we found was even more sinister. That's internal to the system that does that. It's internal to the agencies of the state. It's internal to the function of the state. And all this, again, this leverage funding of the funding appropriations. They're all internal to the state now. It's, it's, it's external even to the lobbying power that you can see is really a, a partial model where the lobbyists get to write the laws and get to sit down and tell you what comma they want, all the attorneys. So that their company gets protected or their industry gets protected in a certain way, and they know that, and you don't. And all this regulation now is used to destroy other new upcoming creativity or old property rights or, or continuing property rights or, or whatever. Raises the amount that it costs for you to get involved with something if you wanted to be creative and become an entrepreneur. What did I hear now? It talked $15,000 to be able to learn how to braid hair. What women used to do amongst themselves and their tribes naturally. And nobody knows how to say that. Hey, I have a custom and tradition to do this without a permit. You can't say that for yourself. No, you're going to go either not do it or go do it as a criminal because you didn't understand how to say that. Or you're going to go through the classes, thousands and thousands of hours, learn how to braid hair. Just so you get your permit. No, this is our, our, this is our life now. We are agreeable to these people that come in and make the atrocities in our life that we conform ourselves to. Like, to me, it's just, Gaza and Israel is just the epitome. To, to me, Israel's nothing but a terrorist. It's just nothing but an is-is, right? An is-us, isn't it? Israel-US. It's a tool, again, for another agenda. Also, on top of that, it's real easy for me to, to see the connections here and see almost predictable how they're going to move stuff. It's all the same thing. I mean, I'm looking at stuff right now. It came through. I'm not going to get to it. Talking about uh, the diseases, the pandemics. Are now, now we're finding out they're monetized. There it is again, leverage funding. That's easy. I know I, can just, now I know exactly what they're doing now with it. And I told you about that before. I didn't ever have the tangible proof. It's all. It, this is the same plan over and over and over. And all you're watching is a bunch of people sitting in a room figuring out new schemes to make new things to, to make the world go round for them. And I don't know what drives all that. It's all kind of beyond me. I'm not. I'm just not into that. It just never has been. Never made sense to me. But there are people that it does make sense to. And so this is the point I tell you. You, you, you and I may be. You and I. Together, we might be different different psyches altogether, but there's others. There's people out there that are not, and they could care less about you. All they want to do is figure out in the in the game, the game that's been laid out here and been adjusted to, and how they keep adjusting it, is that somehow they keep on top of that game, and they don't care about what you think. In, in fact, I mean, the more I think. What you think becomes important in that they understand where you stand. And when they understand where you stand, they can make something contrary to you, make a division, and now they got mo- They can make money, power, control, or whatever. It's pretty simple how they figured this all out. It's almost as if you can't have an opinion in the world. And in, in some regard, that's the absolute truth, but that's where I found the property laws allowed a, 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 a separation. But like Jerusalem was separate, the corpus... <laughs> the city was separated. Yeah, you do that with your land disposal. You do that with the evidence in your patent, short of the res- any reservations in it. People don't even understand what these documents have the power to do, the very same thing. 
And what you're seeing is somebody, um, your local government with the power of the cops and the uh, military that we call the cops, uh, that would be like you if you have a patent on your, which you have a patent on your land. If you've got a piece of land and you're, and you're buying it, it'd be just like the county having a SWAT team come in and saying that the neighbor right next to you has the right to use half of your property. That's what Jerusalem is with the Israelis right now. Did that make it a little more ho close to home? So what's happening over there in Jerusalem and against the Palestinian people or the Israelites is what's happening to you if this county were to come in and just drop your uh, hated neighbor that you had, right? In fact, a neighbor that's moved in next door, that squatted on the land, and then now they want your peace, and then the county said, yeah, we're going to help them give you half of your land to them. Is, didn't I just, just describe what a conservation power of the state is to condemn your land for conservation environmental fraud? This is the stakeholder thing as well. It's all the same, folks, over and over and over. To me, it's it, I, I can't help but see it everywhere. Well, up until you do the certain things that it can't be, like, Understand the like these law these law land disposal laws and how they're working and how you catch someone being a criminal even if they're in official capacity. Well, I tell you, I don't mess around with it. I don't give them any time to make a record to show that they may have some validity there. We we kill it right up front. We just don't allow it to have a. You don't have to uh, have an idea that they might have a say. You shut it down. And I don't see many people doing that for themselves. And it's, I mean, to me, I don't know. Like I said, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be here forever. Uh, when I'm gone, it's over. And the rest of you are doing what you're doing. Uh, I can't, that's not going to be nothing I'm going to change. But I'd, I'd hope a better, a better bit for you, better than a delusion. Sixty protesters are killed. And, uh, Nikki Haley walks out of a meeting where they're talking about how abusive all that is. What is that? Well, that's the system that you live in. That's the system that's taking down all your rights and your property and all the things you thought. Why we have to uh, answer to anybody. Why you're being shot in the streets is because some cop decides, he uh, or, or raped, just because he decides he wants to make fun of all the licenses the attorneys have given them uh, and the system and policies that don't exist to constrain it. When you need policies for these cops to, to constrain their activity, you should have recognized you're in a world of hurt to begin with. If they can't constrain themselves... And you want to blame what ought to be? We're so far away from what ought to be, it's not even, I mean, for, like I said, I don't even want to discuss it. It's not even It's not even relevant to the world anymore. What's relevant to the world is where are they taking this thing and how can we can subvent, subvert it uh, to bring it back if we can. If we can. So again, these non-disclosures, these lack of things they don't tell us or see these dangers that you know, that come up late, you know, that you're reading about, and all of a sudden, oh, well, that's not working out so well. Israel's like right up in front. It's, that's been a, that's a, a cancer right up front, and we're not saying anything about it. How, how are we supposed to be, how are we supposed to respond to the, expect to respond to the more subtle in, invasions? The more subtle things that, they attack us with that are we, even innocently. If I can even give them the innocence of, oh, we're just doing our thing. We're looking for the best. We're looking for to improve society. We're looking for better things, you know, better living through chemistry and biology. And, and no one really looks at the total expense. They're just told it's less expensive. Oh, it'll make you more profit or it'll make us less use pesticides. And then you realize that what they lied about the pesticide. It doesn't really go away. They just told us that, but they lied. And then I, I hear, I look at it as I hear crickets. So what is this thing that these cancers that we allow in the world to fester and build up and kill people, and kill lifestyles and kill ways of life and kill societies? It's us, folks. We're just we're continually le letting it happen somewhere else because we allow it to ourselves.
I, again, I, it's hard not to see all this stuff similarly everywhere I look, whether you're looking at people being murdered, massacred in a place that they ought not to, ought not to be, but they are, and no one, and everyone says, oh, that's not right, but no one does anything to stop it, and the bulliest, biggest bullies that could stop it are the ones that are the perpetrators? Uh, really, I don't even have words to talk about how, I mean, where are we going with that? What, what word is bad enough? And really, aren't we just looking for a, a truth? Uh, aren't we being trying to wanting to be honest with ourselves? What is the problem with the people called Israeli not actually being Israelite? See, I don't even really care if they. I've told you if they can show a right, it, fine. This this work it out. But where did they get, where did this fabrication after this post-48 fabrication have power to have a say at all? That it has given the power to kill and murder, a, a, commit genocide. That we've given over so much responsibility and left none to ourselves that we just, we can only not get to the point where we can watch it. And we hope someone steps up to say, hey, we got a problem here and we're gonna we're working on fixing it. But you're not even hearing any of that. You're hearing nobody say we're gonna fix it. We're just seeing everybody complain about its existence. And so I'll move on. We find out things that are like I said, biological, chemical, we have societal, uh, things that aren't working so well reinvestigating those things that we've created. We're not even doing that to see whether or not it's still working for us. When we see a problem, a wheel come off the wagon, we try to go on three wheels instead of saying, wait, well, let's go fix the fourth wheel. We need it eventually here. Uh, but So there's a report that came through. We're talking about we're moving on now to what they feed us and how they're, the food security they talk about, this old global order thing, uh, how they uh, want you to live in the future, those that are making the decisions, the companies that are lobbyists that are involved with how they do, how this works out for you against you, uh, your silence against it all, and then there that being a consent, which is not true, but it, that's how they accept it. Uh, more people, more things coming along is proof, uh, without question, that something's amiss and something needs to be checked. And for those of you that would be interested to do this and have the ability to, I, I'm always asking you to find the wrong you want to make right. Relative to GMOs, genetic modifications, I told you the CAS, the CRISPR-9, CRISPR-Cas9 technology being touted as the uh, bee's knees of, of uh, genetic engineering. Uh, interestingly, uh, somebody did a check and they found out that there might be a problem. So those of you that are looking for more evidence of, uh, and I'm, you know, where GMO could work, I have no problem, but they, their basic fundamental problem is that they don't really know what they're dealing up against and they don't ha will not answer the the mutation problem and, and and so that's where it stops and starts right starts and stop starts and stops right there for me until that gets answered well it just so happens someone actually a scientist actually did some investigation on uh, where this technology starts and stops and where it was uh, like no different than before where a company would say that oh there's no problem uh, this scientist found something else. C uh, CRISPR-Cas9 interference in cassava linked to evolution of edited, editing-resistant Gemini viruses. Uh, what This is uh, what their post was, and so we read a bit here, uh, uh, again, about thinking something is okay. This is where we think it's okay. I mean, when we get to Israel, we, don't, we can't see it's okay, but the, everyone allows it. This is where we thought it was okay. And someone who's in the field, a scientist, is actually studying us. And this is where I can appreciate this. I don't need to be told what you think. I just need to tell what you know. And I need to be able to decide whether or not it's what I want to think. Uh, that let me have the information and let me see whether or not I want to engage it. More than saying I'm anti-something. And so we have a discussion here on this study that was done in trying to find a way to genetically engineer plants so that it would be uh, re more resistant to a virus, kind of like Israel over there in, 
in Palestine. Uh, how, what's the inoculate for that? How do we genetically engineer that thing? Uh, well, they find out that they're having more trouble about it before where they thought they didn't know that they didn't anticipate this. So we, I'll just read a couple passages here. I think it's important to understand the truth of this is that they found a limitation. The, the interesting part is that you would think an investigator is going to know they're going to need more investigation. In this regard, looking honestly at the problem, we see we have a problem. Well, I may not want it in my food now, but we now we have a problem, and we can focus in on the problem now, which may eliminate the problem. Where if we weren't honest and wasn't disclosed, the information is not disclosed on the totality of whatever could be happening, we won't be looking at that to fix it is my main contention about all this dishonesty and all this stuff. Because it may be that these things are fixable if we stop being deceitful and we started to understand the totality of what's up. This experiment came up to show us that they've now recognizing a problem in this uh, CRISPR engineering for gene modification. We use CRISPR CRISPR Cas9 in the staple food crop cassava with an aim of engineering resistance to African cassava mosaic virus, a member of the widespread and important family of plant pathogen DNA viruses, by cleaving the virus replicative genome, we found that between 33 and 48% of edited virus genomes evolved a conserved single nucleotide mutation that confers resistance to CASPER-Cas9 cleavage. Our study highlights the potential for virus escape from this technology. Care should be taken to design CRISPR-Cas9 experiments that minimize the virus escape. And so what they found is this thing mutates itself and makes itself protectant on subsequent gene modification. Uh, they didn't know about that. I'm going to go on to read a couple more paragraphs here. I found it fascinating. It certainly acknowledges they have a problem. It certainly says, I don't know that we want to uh, maybe utilize this technology yet, but it does show the technology is looking at itself, and I can only hope that they start doing that better, because if they don't, and they keep trying to hide this, and we don't insist on disclosure. Everyone's looking for UFO disclosure. They better be doing this kind of disclosure and insisting on it. And the absence of this disclosure, they better be engaging their agencies that are making the rules, and they better tell, uh, they better engage them in a way that they are required to start showing. And in the absence of your of your mass request uh, demand, I would say to do that, the agencies will allow the governments to go through the corporations to go through as as um, inexpensive as possible. This report goes on to say in the second paragraph, the bacterial Casper Cas9 clustered regular interspaced short palindromic repeats CRISPR associated 9 gene editing system can be used to engineer resistance to DNA viruses through direct cleavage with virus genome. Okay, get Folks, it's cleavage here on DNA, not the other. Unlike the conventional gene editing using CRISPR-Cas9 engineering, virus resistant requires constitutive and permanent expression of ribonucleoprotein uh, complex in the host. For example, CRISPR-Cas9 system has been used to engineer immunity to latent HIV-1 proviruses, hepatitis B viruses, herpes simplex virus, and the human papilloma virus in mammalian cell lines. I want you to remember that. Just hang that out as a side and say, this is the technology they're using to do this. And then remember, as they explain to us what happens here that they find, uh, maybe connect that back up to those things. Uh, again, the problem of mutation, which has already been proven in other ways. CASPER-9, CASPER-9, CRISPR-Cas9 has also been used to uh, in the model plants Arabidopsis theolana and nicotiana methylmayana to engineer resistance to SSDNA Gemini viruses. However, the degree to which using Casper Cas9 to engineer virus resistance results in the evolution of resistant viruses is 
unknown. Now, I just got to stop and pause here, not reading on the document, but say there's a statement that the, the, the technology has a blind spot that anybody who wants to make a valuable comment, meaningful comment to an agency or some state imposition or whatever, should take that little sentence out and say they don't know this. And then extrapolate what they don't know this means in the context of what's being applied. And you probably have a very formidable thing that would say they're going to have to figure out how to know that and answer to it before it gets brought in. And if you don't go say that, they, they look right past this admission that they don't know. And so just an interject in there on this one sentence was enough to empower someone who they want, who if you wanted to, uh, way beyond what I hear people complaining, oh, I don't want GMOs, this and that. No, it's the technology has a blind spot that well, then you don't have to go back and research what that blind spot could possibly do. And here's an evidence. One concern, which has previously been highlighted, might be that planting transgenic or virus-resistant CRISPR-Cas9 plants in the field will impose a selection pressure on viruses while simultaneously providing viruses with a mechanism via Cas9-induced mutations to escape resistance. We applied CRISPR-Cas9 to engineer resistance to Gemini viruses in cassava and investigated the impact of engineering resistance on Gemini virus evolution. We failed to engineer Gemini virus resistance, but we found that the that use of CRISPR-Cas9 led to emergence of a novel, conserved mutant virus that cannot be cleaved again. We urge caution in the application of Casper, CRISPR-Cas9 for virus resistance in plants, both in glass, house, and field settings, to prevent the evolution of novel viruses. I'm going to interject here. Don't you think they could use this, as I was telling the pigs fly flu, was they said a novel virus? Do you think they've been using this technology to make novel spinoffs in order to see what they might be able to bring in as a pandemic? So here's a, again, you start to use this information instead of just listening to it and now thinking you know so much, you actually take it and go put it in before somebody who wouldn't otherwise want to see it and you make a public record of this by an agency that's going to license someone to use this technology that you're going to consume or your little ones are going to consume in the future. And you say, listen, they have a blind spot. They know this is a problem. It creates novel things they've never seen before. The, these novel things can also be uh, patented, and we don't even know what those do. And they are a byproduct that we don't have a clue is that, is what it's doing, it, the extent of its impacts or harm. Now, this is not just what we eat. This is to the environment and other viruses, you see. And then we have also a mechanism, possibly, you talk about super viruses that are being developed, super, needing super antibiotics. We may see the mechanism here. Toying with Mother Nature on this level may not be such a smart idea. I don't want to say that far. But the point is that you can start building that just from this report. I think I'll read this last thing. Um, I want to read this last thing. Maybe not. Uh, it goes through and explains what cassava is a staple food. So they're dealing with the basic foodstuffs of a, of a whole nation, uh, a continent, actually, and, and part of South Asia. So we're not, we're not into small things that they're trying to do. They do have a problem, but is, do we want to make, do we want this, this technology to be done without a check? This was one of the first checks I've seen that was done. Uh, that I th I thought could be used by someone to say, well, thank you for checking, but maybe we don't want to be going uh, without headlong any further until we know a little a lot better what's happening. Uh, this is a first acknowledgement of the mutations I told you I had a problem with in a test, and this is an important test because it did come from people that are in the field. In fact, this poster on Twitter said, you aren't going to like what I found here, but this is important for us to admit to and get done, get out so we can work on it. And that was really my, my whole sentiment with this whole nonsense that we've been hearing from regulatory bodies. And that may be an angle that you use when you talk to any uh, regulatory body or your county or whoever they want to come with their authority. 
and said, we have a we have a police power here. And you said, well, your police power goes only to the point that you know and not till you don't know. At that point, you, your police power has to stop being the, the the club and it has to start to become more the, the nurturing member until you figure it out. We, we need some protection in these blind spot areas that we now are known to cause mutations of unknown impact. And then well, how could it be when we have this story here, a uh, new DNA structure found? I think I might have reported this, but if not, I want to bring it up here again. Why Why might these mutations be happening? They don't know. It's a blind spot. But here they have new, other sciences, so-called reverse engineering, how these cells, these DNA packages come together, and they come in different forms. And those forms, I was telling you, the geometry on all this is so important. They unfold and refold and do all kinds of things different than what was expected under the new finding of the new so-called new DNA structure. It's just new to our awareness. There's another proof right here. The lack of understanding of that form, that structure, should be enough to caution any regulation of imposition and, and utility on a food stuff or a feed stuff. And if you look at what I tell you about doing the administrative procedures on how you address, there's the guidelines on how you would address just about your county, your cities, your federal authorities, your, your state regulatory bodies, all in this particular subject matter. They line out how you would make the discussion. It's not really that hard. You would lay out these, the, the lack of knowledge, this blind spot here, has, they have not shown a test. We, they show that there's ramifications they don't know. These look to have an impact that is not uh, good. Uh, or an extended impact, and we, the, they, you, uh, the, the agency have not insisted, and they have not shown to uh, this a part and impact sufficiently to comply with the ability to be uh, authorized. It is part of a statement you, a package you, you know you would you would assemble, but new they, we're learning we don't know I guess is the point. We're again more experts say, the more we look, the more we find. That's the fascinating part. But this has now been tied into we we look and we find and we can mark market and and we can possess because it's novel we can possess it under the laws and we can possess it for a profit and the government thugs will protect us in that and they give us and they extend us licenses when we get that we get to promote it our way we don't have to look at things that may not be advantageous to the promotion of something the problem is folks they're dealing in the essences of your life in these matters. And so now we have an adulteration of the function of the power, police power, your health, safety, welfare, morals, whatever, you know, six, seven, ever other listed things. So here, this, I just want to call your attention. Not only do they just find out that they have mutations in their, I told you, just manipulating the, 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 the gene structure will cause these problems. The cell will respond. The cell is a living thing already. It's responding. So it's going to protect itself. Here's the, again, a proof. I told you that it was there. Here's the proof it happens. I'm glad to see that they've acknowledged it. I hope it goes a lot deeper. In some regard, it would be nice to see. It wouldn't bother me to find out that they overcome the problem of the mutation, wouldn't it? Because then now we're maybe making it more holistic to what it could be. It becomes more like hybridization than interjection. I'm going to stick my stuff in your, I'm going to get, stick my face in your grill. I'm going to put my stuff right, I'm going to put myself, interject you. I'm going to stuff Israel down in Jew, everyone's throat in Jerusalem. No, no, we learn how to come together a lot better, and through these processes we learn how to become more natural to the natural process, which was, which nature has built over time to keep itself healthy. Our intrusion here, causes an unhealthy response. It's an actually it's a healthy response, but the byproducts are unhealthy. And they're done for unhealthy reasons ultimately when you when you track it back to, if you will, man's need to uh, underneath the color of food security, we're actually just looking for a an excuse to make a profit for some reason. Whatever. I haven't figured that one out either. So a new new uh, structure found how, again, evidence, how can we possibly know these blind spots 
in the technology that they're not checking out, uh, we know that the initial findings showed anomalous characteristics. Should be something you should artic you could articulate in a statement, nice and concise, and produce a formidable response in reason and logic that's not normally placed in the records, and why we are living in the in the nonsense that we see. And, and like this is Israel thing. Somehow, somebody, all these people that are involved want to see this. That's why it's going on. And no one's really settled down and say, kind of like I told you, the Wayne Hage Jr. condition. You know, it would only take probably 10 minutes. And that would be just a lot of introduction and getting to know each other. Uh, 10 minutes to solve the Wayne Hage Jr. water problem with someone who knows about the condition. It would go right down the list. You can put them down. Give me the list and give me the spreadsheet. Uh, give me your column, the uh, left side, right side. We go right down that thing in about a few seconds with what you had, what you didn't have, and the answer would be at the bottom, and it would have to re relate to the man's property rights. It wouldn't relate to some administrative imposition. It would go pretty quickly. Why? Because you would also balance burdens. And the burdens are not on error and harm. They're not to cause error and harm, these so-called impacts. And so we start to get more organized in our mind, and we start communicating more outwardly this way instead of trying to show how much, tell people how much we know and arguing as an issue like what we know against what they know, when in fact they may not know anything. They may be on an agenda. They may be actually honest in what they know, but what they know is a belief system and not actual reality. Oh, it ought to be like this, and so darn it, it better ought to be. Well, the problem is it's not. It, it's, it's, it's a, there's a reality that we have to actually nail that down because that seems to be get wiped right off the tabletop right before we even get started. And this is what I say when we, I'm just speaking maybe through this uh, Jefferson Mining District, we do the coordination. We go right to the ba the basics of the law, the, what's how it's written. We say how we see we're guided by it. We don't make it up. We say, okay, that this is how the requirements are supposed to be, and we just make sure they're fulfilled. Uh, really, what's so hard about that? And then we're keen to, because we understand this, the methodology, we're keen to the deception and fraud. We're keen to start rooting it out. Not an argument, it's just the fact of exposing it. And this is a, a different way to communicate. Like I said, I don't have time for an argument. I have not time for an opinion. I don't have time to show how much I, you know, how much I, uh, I'm a constitutionalist because I can quote a certain passage. That ain't me. Some guy, you have a problem. The world moves along. You get, like this thing with the mon the cryptocurrency. Where does where is cryptocurrency fit in all this? This is a very astute question. My response is not, oh, oh, Article 1, whatever, Section 8, 10, whatever the heck it is, gold and silver money. Well, that is a constitutional money, but that's not the question. And that's not the reality of how this thing gets moved around when you understand how the gold posts get moved by the systems that are. Because inside that question about cryptocurrencies that I'm sitting, I do have a dog in the fight. I would like to see this thing called the cryptocurrency move in a system parallel to an organized system. I would like to see a privatized system that was impervious to the assimilation of the hive. The Borg. So, can we analyze that? Can we see the limitation? Can we find where those limitations are in the system? What? How does that exist when the system is not supposed to be there but does exist? How, how do we position this thing? It's a very astute question that I, I'm still not quite sure how I want to respond, and I haven't to it. The point is that there's an analysis that needs to be made. It's not just what ought to be. So we have the DNA structures that can affect the editing. We also have this... Uh, the genes that can be affected by its environment, the epigenetic structuring change. And we have uh, the environmental harm to us uh, in the utility of these, these, um, what do you call these, new products that come on. 
we have the well the the non disclosure the lie that says that these chemicals and stuff they use in con conjunction with these uh, these genetically altered things that are mutations themselves the chemicals that are being used with these the the, the extent and the contamination is being lied about and these are in the in the FDA uh, for the food and the lack of uh, comment to these things is expanding the problem again it's to me i see this all as part of us the the lack of our integration we, we want to we want to scream and yell and complain and whine but we don't want to write a simple letter really and then and then be dog on it be persistent into it uh, we find weed killer found in granola and crackers internal fda email show internal to the uh, again, the FOIAs and things are pro coming up. We have more facts for those of you that wouldn't get engaged. You can include this part tied on to the thing I've been talking about for the last 20 or so, 30 minutes regarding them, those mutations, and then the, mis and dis the lack of disclosure and misinformation and the failure of the FDA to adhere to the knowledge that it has at hand that these things are being misused as well or extended beyond even what the record of the companies has said. It can be stated in a very concise way to be made an open record, not the one that the e e FDA can hide. So this is coming out as well. We have these, all the, the mutation is our life, our society is a mutation. What ought to be might ought to be, but it's not what it is. So you can live in the, live in, like they say, live in the past of what ought to be. Or you can admit, well, that's what we should have kept and we didn't. We're here over here now today and we got a lot of work to do. And we can stand prideful in all the times we can recite the Constitution that's not in force and effect anymore for whatever reason. That ought to be and stand smug in our knowledge of that. Or we say, wow, that's a marker for how far away we are. We better get to work. And that's where I've been trying to get people, when I get behind a woodshed here, to try and get you. We got, yeah, there's some ought to be's, but it ain't no more. It should have never moved from where it was to where it is, but it's no longer back there. And we can start complaining about how long it's been back there, how it's not there no more. But the fact is, it's over here now. And if we expect to get back to where it was better and to stop these people from doing this harm to all of us, we are going to have to move it back. But it's not going to be with saying what ought to be and just ignoring what is. But U.S. government scientists have detected a weed killer linked to cancer in an array of commonly consumed foods, email obtained from the Freedom of Information Request show. So again, these these FOIAs are all important. They give you the knowledge, and you may have to work for it. Not that hard. It's kind of fun in a way to, to go through, especially when you set them up to uh, set them up to uh, cause them to cause fraud, you know, a lie. You, you, like I've told you, I've told you how to do that. Uh, you, you seed the record with something you, you want. You ask it for it back, and if they say it's not there, then you got them. Uh, if they send it back to you, fine, but the other other information is probably coming with your second request. But the Food and Drug Administration uh, had been testing food samples for residues of glyphosate, an active ingredient in, in hundreds of widely used herbicide products for two years, but has not yet released any official results. But the internal documents obtained by The Guardian show that the FDA has had trouble finding any food that does not carry traces of the pesticides. Uh, what happened was that uh, well, I have bought, I have brought uh, weed crackers, granola cereal, and cornmeal from home, and there's a fair amount in all of them, says the FDA chemist Rob Richard Thompson wrote to colleagues in an email last year regarding glyphosate. Uh, Thompson, who is based on uh, based in an FDA regional laboratory in Arkansas, or Kansas, wrote the. Uh, the broccoli was the only food he had on on hand that he found to be glyphosate free. A hint: uh, the uh, the internal. I guess they don't need to desiccate that in order to be broccoli, so they don't need to spray it with glyphosate. The internal FDA email, uh, dated uh, 20 uh, January 2017, is part of a string of FDA communications to detail the agency's efforts to ascertain how much of the popular weed killer showing up in American food. The test marked the agency's first ever such examination. Well, they found out, let's ultimately get down to the point, like read and read, that their testing samples were such that it looked, made it look like there was no glyphosate. When the, when the chemists went down and just bought stuff from the stores, they found out that there was glyphosate. In other words, the non-official sampling 
was in fact finding glyphosate. The official or, or company uh, uh, relied upon sampling uh, didn't show any. So here's here this story shows us evidence. And what I, I think I tweeted out, although I don't remember now, I tweeted out uh, what this was. I said, uh, so this would be a place where someone steps up and on any, any when they get the next hearing for these rules, you make a rule adjustment on adjusting their sampling techniques. And based on this evidence, you go find out what did the scientists do that were unofficial sampling, and you adopt that as the official sampling so that you can get a better sample to test for this problem. So what you're not doing, you're not attacking them and saying, oh, they're a bunch of liars and they're working hand in glove with the corporations, the, the, this, that. You know, no, you just work to solve the problem. You say your sampling procedures have been, been, been found to be faulty. Uh, they do not correctly show the glyphosate content. This is what it looks like. This was an example of what was done. This did show it. We need you to adjust the sampling tech, uh, tactics like this and uh, make that a new rule. And you'll have the other side, which the companies get all screaming about it. But the point is, you stand on the fact that the first sampling was incorrect. And it takes a few people just to sit and watch, babysit that problem. If you want to start getting glyphosate checked, you're going to have to, you now see uh, the policy for sampling and all these foodstuffs may be faulty. This should be a news to you to focus how you're going to make a, a, a meaningful participation in what is otherwise hurting you. If you don't have this knowledge, you wouldn't know to do this. Now that you have this knowledge, you know to do this. Now that you have the knowledge to do this and you do it, your likelihood of success and the elimination of glyphosate in our food system, or maybe uh, polluted such a little bit, like 5%, uh, will start to happen. Otherwise, these people get over on us on all aspects. Again, I, whatever you're interested or not interested in, I can't make that decision. However integrated you want to be, I don't know how many minutes it would take to actually pen a letter about what I just said. And just babysit that, did you do it? And and then prepare, maybe put the threat on them to do a, an injunction. That you can enjoin the rules until until they get it right. I mean, if you can't, you can hand your evidence to someone who can. I mean, at least you become part of a step that is not being done right now. And it's really, to my mind, it's really not that, that hard. Every time we put a meaningful comment that hit, addressed the requirements that were shown to be failed in the agency's responsibilities, the agency will not take the next step and do the wrong thing. It's wherever we didn't do that is that they keep, they keep stepping along. Which shows you that it's, it's a plan. You're up against an enemy now and, and okay. But, but it's easy to deal with. Glyphosate testing fraud found. Uh, this is uh, the article that starts it. What I wanted to point out again was these these FOIAs are all all important on, on finding this stuff out. They, they give you a, what you need in a small package, as I'm trying to show you. You don't have to know the whole subject matter. You just have to know how it failed, how the system is failing to make the rules that's supposed to protect us. Like I told you about the police uh, policies. How many times have we come back through to show? I told you that a long time ago affect the policies, that affects the change. But you have to integrate yourself with that. You can't just complain about it and say, think someone else is going to do it. Hopefully a lot of you will, 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 okay, well I have to, okay, I guess I have to. And a bunch of you do that and find yourself all down at the same day wanting the same policies change and then you can work together. I mean, you don't know until you get involved. Like I said, 2013, I would have never guessed I would have never guessed how they made legislation uh, to work as an erector set. Until I was watching the pieces fly past us, trying to catch whatever we could to respond to. And after a while, I started making sense of the of the dynamic, the, the things that we were, the legislation that was coming through. Oh, that's the bolt that holds this nut on this piece and this over here. And I go, wow, these all these thousands and thousands of bills are actually little pieces. It's like an erector set to bigger things. And that's how you start to see how this works. They all work on the record as a building a record that allows them to violate you. And so if you're not there to vocal, be vocal local to that, they win. It's that's really that simple. You don't have to be a, all that big a brain about it. You just have to see 
whether or not they've met the minimum requirements for doing what they're supposed to do. Anyway, so this other thing about the glyphosate testing, they go through quite a bit of the chelation of the minerals in your body, why it's no good, and uh, uh, pretty interesting, more, another discussion. He calls him Monster San, uh, Santo. Uh, you know, I call him Mon Satan. It doesn't matter. We can call them names. The point is, uh, what are you doing in order to uh, restrict their free license to harm us? And this is a, a global function now. And it shouldn't have been too hard for a lot of you, a lot of you, you know, freemen, truthers, whatever you call yourself, uh, uh, personages, uh, you know, the, the, the anti-personages, to see that a corporations, or the governments were corporations, and this is global governance evident, anyway. It doesn't, see, to me, once you start, once you say that and you just completely compl continue to whine, you're not helping the problem. The point is, we all see it. Now what? What have you done today? What have you done for me lately kind of thing? What have you done to stop it now that you see it? We see it is what it is. Like Clint Richardson's work. What did you do with that for him? And I have a couple people that actually now understand to dig in. They dig in, they find the answers, and they come up with a whole different aspect. It's completely blindsides the people that they were coming after, the government. What are you doing to to help people with their work? What do you do? To take my when you take my work when you take it and you help help so help yourself or help somebody else. This is how we're going to do this. None of us individually are going to do this on our own. I don't think we'll do certain things on our own, but we're going to have to help each other with and not fight amongst each other. Stop the division and the titles and the. And the like early on, Hamas and why the children? Who cares? Israel's not supposed to be there. Why don't we focus on that? And if they are supposed to be there, let's finish the process so everyone knows that what it is so we can get back to supposedly living at peace that the actual Israelites used to do. They used to live in peace. It wasn't until this interjection that we got the mutation. This cancer being injected into a place. And this is what we do to ourselves. We don't, we don't look at that point. We look at all the noise around it. Uh, but anyway, so those of you that uh, want to make a noise about this GMO, I've given you some things. You can see that the scientists are coming. We have some problems. Just You don't have to get like rail against it and beat down on everybody because they have problems. Say they have problems. Uh, they have mutations that they don't know about. We really don't want, we don't know what the effect is. They don't know what the effect is. So we want to keep this thing on the table, uh, uh, keep it tabled and no decision made. You can't accept this in as viable food until they answer this question. Maybe all you have to say. And if they don't want, the agent doesn't want to do it, then you go in and enjoin a 15 day process. You enjoin that, that process because they didn't check into the impacts and didn't know on a scientific basis how that would affect us. But you do have evidence that harms could be done, and in particular, irreparable harms. I just give, I just laid out an injunction right there for you all. But let's go on for it. California defeats Mon Satan in court, lists glyphosate as a carcinogen. Uh, so here we have a court in California uh, said that the glyphosate is considered a carcinogenic. carcinogenic. Do you want it in your food, folks? It's, to me, this is just a piece of evidence, a piece of paper you put in a package of a statement that says you, 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 you're not, as an agency, allowing this in your food, our food, or even going to a store saying, I don't want you to use this food anymore. How about stop buying this food? Here's why. You can advocate for better food in your neighborhood. You don't have to go to the government. Go to the companies. Go, go to a lab and figure out a way to make it a cheap a tester, a testing system so you can do affordable tests, collect money to do tests for the food, uh, but base it on this thing. Well, wait a minute. Now I've got glyphosate, and California says it's a carcinogen. And here's a court case that says that that's law. I don't know why this, uh, why what I'm saying is so uh, hard to understand or not exciting in a way. I mean, you got to wait it out to handle some of this. I really don't think that people had an idea of this before, as I've been bringing these kinds of things to people. I don't really believe that people had a thought about it. And I get that because I have to tell people real basic things about how this moves along. It's not that complicated. 
but it, you do have to lay, lay out your position. You have to lay out your, your, your facts, but you don't want to get it overwhelming either. And so here, what do you put all this together? And I was trying to get to all this last week. Again, so much to speak to. Uh, this is all, all these, all this DNA and stuff, all that, all this glyphosate, GM, GMOs, all this was discussed, supposed to be discussed last week. But what about that, folks? What about what I've been talking about, packaging up a, a comment? Uh, you have the ability right now, USDA proposes for GMO labels. So there, I'll have a link for this. You have a way to participate right now in what they want to do with a, what's going to be on the label of a package for something being bioengineered. So first of all, you understand this is your future. It's You're going to have bioengineered food. So you... I don't know what you want to say about that, but it's coming, and they're going to now put a label. They want to know, which label do you want? Now, that sounds a little bit trite, but the way I looked at it is some of these, the, what the labels they're doing is almost a promotion inside the label that you need to oppose. And I don't know, and I haven't read the, the you have a 60-day comment. I don't know how, when that time started. You get the link. If you're interested, you can look at these things. I was uh, kind of put off by two of them. It makes it look like little round faces with smiley faces and all this, and it's uh, uh, bioengineered. I wasn't real happy about that promotion. Uh, better the B-E in a round symbol, maybe black and white, maybe stark. But you may want to go look. This is a nice, simple little thing. You may want to look, and you may want to put a comment under what one you want that the government's going to promote uh, bioengineered food to you. And look at the contents of what they're expecting and answer to what they want the way they want it. And involve yourself as to how they're going to promote to you these things that I just talked to you are used for chemical carcinogens to be in your food and or the DNA of, um, and genetic engineering, which has mutations that they don't have, they don't have a clue about. You, you, I don't know how much more simple I could say, how much less threatening it could be. You get to choose a picture. You get to tell them. You get to make start becoming a record on, we don't want you promoting bioengineered as a happy face with a, inside a sun. No, we want this black and, or whatever you want to choose. We want just the BE to tell us that it's bioengineered, no promotion on happy face suns. Because we have mutations, we have uh, advanced use of chemicals that are carcinogenic, uh, A, B, C, and D, uh, whatever. You, you just, you, I don't want to be your brains either. And I get, again, I get enough. You guys are pretty sharp out there. I see stuff all the time in the chats. I'm thinking that's brilliant. I want you all to apply all that. I want, I want us to work together to do that. I want, you know, we're talking about databases and, and blockchain. What about this databasing, accessible databasing, correlation databasing that we could put together to, to go on a website and look around and say, oh, this is what the, who, this is all, oh, these are all the guys and, and companies involved. I make a list, a printout, and I get to now speak on facts, immediately picked up everything I wanted to know. What, what, where with all this technology are we just whining and complaining and plugging ourselves in more into places uh, that the government wants us? And why, are, why is the tool being used more efficiently by the government than us anyway? But thank you for tuning in today. I hope something I said uh, inspires you at some level, opens opens horizons for you. Grimner, thank you for what you do at reallibertymedia.com, taking care of the place and uh, washing the dishes and all that you do. Uh, folks, uh, freedomnetwork.com, I should have said earlier, uh, freedomnetwork.com it needs uh, donations every month, going to need it. Uh, it's on wind uh, wind power, I think, and uh, wheezing. Uh, we got till the 23rd of June uh, in, uh, to get that going. And Jules, thank you very much for continuing uh, the uh, simulcast over there at ucy.tv. Uh, thank you very much uh, for what you do there. And um, folks, I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs are nature willing. that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose.
that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. 